kids learn that yeah. losing can be a great learning experience. Yeah, um, you know, uh, I lost a lot more than I won. I mean, for example, you look at uh, uh, what the Tiger Woods just won, uh, won the whatever the PGA event was just just recently, and and they were talking about how how remarkable it was that he's won like twenty four percent or twenty six percent of the tournaments he's entered. Wow, that means he's failed three fourths of the time. If you think of not winning as failure. Um, uh, I, I don't think of it that way, but uh, he, 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 he didn't make it to the podium 75% um, of the time. He didn't win the final big trophy. Uh, and, um, and, and yet, I'm sure that he probably learns the most from the moments that he doesn't succeed, because that's when you need to fix things and make things better. When we have a lot of success, we tend to become complacent, and we tend not to focus on the things that we probably should be focusing on um, in the long haul. And so I, um, I, I hated failing, and I failed a lot, and I made a lot of big mistakes in some very important competitions, and I hated it. But looking back, I'm glad I had those moments because it made me refocus and, and, and get down to what I had to do to become a truly world-class athlete. Um, world Championships, 1983, six months before the 84 Olympic Games, going into the horizontal bar finals, I was in second place, ahead of everyone except for one gymnast from Japan. He went up before me and made a huge mistake. So all I have to do is make this routine successfully and I'll be the world champion. And I thought this is my moment. And it was on Wide World of Sports, which was a big sports program in our day. And uh, and I um, and I thought this is my Wide World of Sports moment. I'm, the world's gonna know who I am after this because all I gotta do is hit this routine and I blew it. I completely blew it. A, a very risky, difficult skill that I had put in my routine and I blew it. And I went from potentially first to like eighth place. You know, eighth place in the world is not bad, but when there's only eight people in the competition, you don't really get too excited about it. So, um, and so I, uh, I remember how devastated I was, but I also remember making the commitment as I'm walking away from the arena on this cold day in Budapest, Hungary, just, just beside myself. I, I, I can't believe I did that. And I remember saying, I will never make that mistake again. I got to step taking that skill for granted. And so I, I realized at that moment, I could have trained that skill a little bit better. And so for the next six months leading up to the 84 Olympic Games, I work on that skill a little bit extra, talk about a little extra effort, a little extra every day. So by the time the Olympics rolled around in Los Angeles, I did the exact same routine at the Olympic Games and I scored a perfect 10. So looking back, looking back I can say, you know what, I'm so glad I failed. I am. And it wasn't fun when it happened because I really hated that experience, but I'm glad it happened because it taught me to really focus on, on, on those things I had to work on to really get better. And had I never made the mistake, I very easily could have then continued to take that skill for granted and not train it appropriately. And then very easily, under much greater pressure at the Olympic Games, I, I could have fallen off the high bar there. And you'd be interviewing some other gymnast instead of me. <laughs> Go to sportsmentaltoughness.com to get your free video training and guided visualization MP3 on how to perform under pressure. I'm Craig Sigal, the Mental Toughness Trainer.